Welcome to the James and Heather Show. I'm Heather Dawn. And I'm James Gay, and we're here dishing out sex, love, and relationship advice without all the sexual snobbery. Although Rosie's a bit of a snob when it comes to that type you of keep advice. Calling all our guests. I know. Snobs. I have to insult them, otherwise, you know, there's a place I'm to. A snob. I'm right. just saying. <laughs> all right, all right. I take it back. We have a special guest, <laughs> Rosalind Kine. Thank you so much for joining yeah, thanks us. Thanks for having you guys. Yes, um, and Rosin, uh, entertainer, singer, Rosie, actress, Rosie. 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 We've known each other so long already. Uh, I'm trying to be professional like I don't know her, but the truth is I've known her for like 10 years, uh, and I've had the luxury of seeing you perform a multiple uh, multiple times. So yeah. uh, here in LA and in Sedona, which was really nice. And we're going to be talking about um, love songs and how they can enhance relationship and music and all those kinds of the things. Power right? of the songs power of love songs with Rosalind Kind. Mm. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so let's hear more about who you, you are and who am your I? right who your are entertainment you? and I'm a singer actress. Mm -hmm. I've been singing ever since I left high school. I mean, yeah. I sang as a kid a couple at of home, years ago. But I mean, I went into the business uh -huh. when I graduated high school. My uh -huh. my day of graduation at 9 a.m. Pomp wow. and circumstance, 12 yeah. noon, RCA Studio B. Wow. Amazing. So I started recording. Uh -huh. Wow. Like, that you soon. Know. Yeah, you were ready to yeah. go. Wow. Ready to go. <laughs> it was always in my blood because uh -huh. at home I used to go in front of the mirror and if I went to see a uh -huh. show I would rack out all the parts. Oh, nice. And uh, you know, I'm guessing by the I'm accent meaning. you're yeah. talking about New York. Yes. <laughs> Brooklyn to be exact. Brooklyn? Uh, okay. Who could tell? <laughs> Flatbush. <laughs> Flatbush. There are jokes about that, but I Are won't there? go there. Why not? So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Any sex jokes? Uh. <laughs> well, I used to tell jokes really well, but I don't tell them that much anymore. It's okay. uh. Maybe I have to go on or a few more. I, <laughs> right. I bet you could tell a few political ones. <laughs> oh, the whole thing that's going on now is a joke if it were funny. Hello, right? <laughs> but I'm calm. <laughs> <laughs> so you, from high school, School right into the music business, mm -hmm. and then you were singing a lot at home. And you have a very musical family, right? Yes. yes. Is that mom's side? Is that dad's side? And you've got my a musical side. sister. Sure, my yeah, my mom, my grandfather, my maternal grandfather was a cantor in Russia before they came oh, to this country. Okay. Wow. He passed on his voice to my mom, oh. and she passed it on to my sister, myself. My sister passed it on to her son, oh, okay. you know, who's singing now. Very Jason. musical family. So, yeah. yeah. And you the know, three like, of you toured together, right? Like, yeah, uh, in 2012 and 2013. And just to be clear, her sister is Barbara Streisand, for sand, those of you. Sand. Sand, sand on a sand. beach. Sand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I just got corrected. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important <laughs> correction, Completely. Right? I got corrected <laughs> last week with the term vulva, so this is much better. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Stryzand. <laughs> we go there on this show, yeah. We do. We don't have to talk about your vulva or mine, but we can just. <laughs> Getting back to you and your sister and your nephew. <laughs> uh... <laughs> well, and I'm also curious do you have a preference for some form of entertainment over another? Do you prefer acting or singing or do you just you know, love it I've all? I've always wanted to have a situation comedy on television. I uh, really loved I it. Like and when I was all. studying acting, yeah. I was with uh, Milton Kitsella at one point, and he wanted mm. to see me do Antigone because he felt my mm. comedy was so that I would be. He wanted to see the serious oh, side. Fun. Yeah, yeah. But I love the acting and I love the medium of television because uh, I love it's like a five day work day, if it's on a comedy, a half hour comedy. Uh, yeah. It's five days and then you tape on the last day and you can uh, be at home and sounds not like a nice so schedule. Much yeah. and, everything. and I kinda I love that, but then yeah. you can do your singing and whatever, traveling when you're when you're off, when you're, what is it, when you're in hiatus. Uh, right, right. So I, I, I love that, and I, did, I was with ABC Paramount for a while back. Uh, well, you've when, done TV shows and movies yeah. and Broadway and off-Broadway, and you've done a ton of stuff. And albums, yeah. you've had yeah, albums. I've done a few albums. Uh -huh. <sighs> I've done theater, I've done nightclubs, I've done touring, I've done yeah. performing arts centers. All over the country, all over yeah. the world. Yeah. You've done it's a lot. It's, but I, you know, I don't stop to think about it all the time, and yeah. I don't realize it. And when people ask me, well, what have you done and everything, I, half the time I don't remember the most exciting ones. I have uh, to sit funny. down and really think about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It doesn't stay with me, because I'm in the mo I'm a kind of a person that's in the moment. Yeah, yeah. And well, then sometimes sense. when you say some funny thing, and somebody says, oh my god, I can't believe that. Remember that story? To I go, no. Because <laughs> I was like, in that moment. Again. Right. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. and I've had the luxury of seeing you perform uh, the jazz club over in Hollywood. Catalina. Uh, the Hollywood Bowl with your Hollywood. sister and your nephew. Right. Um, and I saw you in Arizona. Yep. So I've gone to see you in various different venues. It's as exciting for me as I'm sure yeah. it is for you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I could be like, oh my God, I know her. I know her. 
<laughs> so, um, but, you know, those are vastly different venues. So mm. I saw you in that beautiful home. I saw you at the jazz club. I saw mm. you at, and everyone who knows me, I'd love the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah. I'm completely yeah. addicted to the, it it's is, incredible. that is just such an amazing venue. And it was venue. freezing too. Oh yeah, yeah. it, it was, was cold. I remember I was sitting there in a coat with somebody I was dating at the time. I was People just like, oh, oh wow. It was, oh, like, yeah. it was November yeah. 11th, I think, and 13th in 2012. Yeah. And yeah. it was freezing. Yeah, it was. Does that change your performance at all or no except no. that you know and i yeah. i didn't have a coat i went out uh, with my sheer thing I my know. sister was oh, well. she had a nice fur coat yeah she, uh, she was prepared huh? did she, she offer a, you a well, fur she, at least she offered me some uh, hand warmers uh, okay. which do make a difference that, yeah. you know my mother always said they if did. your hands are covered your feet and your, your ears it's true are pretty much makes okay. a big difference yeah yeah um what's your favorite type of venue like did you find the the bowl to be overwhelming uh do you <laughs> like that do you prefer the bigger venues over the more intimate ones i like the intimate ones but i I love a bigger stage because uh, I need it gives me the room to uh, expand and I mean when we were you know I was like nervous we watching were, you when we were, <laughs> I was, I was, you know because I get to see you intimately all the time I was just like oh my god I'm so nervous <laughs> when, <laughs> you're, when you're in those arenas uh -huh. they seem like oh my god especially when you're in rehearsal it's so huge yeah, expansive. but it's so warm when you walk out there to oh. that audience it was just uh, so great oh it's genuine Hi. everybody's like you know, giving you love and, yeah. 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 And, yeah and then my job is to to make it intimate even uh, though it's that big right you still right. bring them close you feel still like you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation right, exactly. or right that's yes yeah that's, well and that's one of the things i think that love songs can do too right that mm -hmm. there's there's like an emotional depth there's like a conveying of um of something that you can't otherwise get like through artistic oh. Um, expression and music, well, music and sound. Music is a universal and, language. I right? mean, it, it's healing. Yeah. Yeah. And it spreads love. I mean, uh -huh. it's the greatest thing for people with Alzheimer's. Oh, yeah. Right. Yes. And I, I once went to an Alzheimer's facility uh, in uh, Ohio, and yeah. it was amazing watching the rabbi mm. with the women. And I, I, I took a, an instrument and I was like playing with them and singing with them. Uh -huh. The smiles, and I uh -huh. learned that from my own mom uh -huh. because okay. it would make her come out of you know put smiles in your face uh, and yeah. start to uh, remember. Right, right. Bring happiness. It's like a different part of the brain or yeah. something where they can connect really to that. It makes right? a difference. Yeah. So music is really quite incredible. It sure yeah. is. Yeah. And it certainly is in the, in relationships and dating, right? They have the I broke up with you song. Oh yeah. Because There's, I my wrist. Yeah, they just, totally. I my wrist songs. <laughs> you know, it's so funny when you get over that hump of the breakup, I can't uh -huh. ever yeah. listen to that song again. I don't uh, I don't right. know about you, but I get this uh, sort of visceral uh, reaction and I was just like, if I've heard a song that I had a horrible breakup to and it was really great when I was broken up, uh, I can't listen to it years later. There's a song in my show called Perfect. It was written yeah. by Anne Hampton Calloway and mm. it's actually looking back at it and having the fond memories. Oh, nice. Perfect. Oh, you know? nice, nice. It's, it's quite a different take. Yeah, it's like, it's a like recognizing ending, the I've, but, I've, but feeling the feelings, but oh. looking at it in a positive way that you still got so much from it while oh, it was nice. there. Yeah. I have tried to stop listening to music when I have breakups because <laughs> there are songs that I really do love and yeah. they've just ruined them for me. Yeah. So Which ones um, in particular? Well, you know, it's funny. Number three on our list was some. I liked the Rihanna song a lot. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Tell I, me what that was, because uh, I'm so not. We found <laughs> love in a <laughs> so hopeless place. It's, I can't <laughs> sing like you. You found it in a hopeless yeah. place. <laughs> You're right. That's part of the reason why <laughs> <laughs> it resonated it for her at the time. Song. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about a breakup song. <laughs> Um, I do love one of the another one of the billboard shops it, mm -hmm. it, on a positive note because I can yeah. get out of the poor me section uh, of this of this episode <laughs> for a second. Um, is the uh, how deep is your love? Bee Gees uh, was, was that was number great. four on the list. How deep is your love? How I was going to say, don't make me sing love. it. Uh. Uh. Cause we're living in a world of what is it? Hope. hope? hope. I think. Bringing us down. <laughs> I wish I knew the word. Oh. How deep is your love? How deep is your love? <laughs> I really need There's to know. I, I, have, I have not been doing in my show lately, but yeah. it's very sexy. Okay. And um, a friend of mine, Cortez, no, no, did you Cortez? No, I did this before Cortez. I mm. worked with Cortez and did some other songs um, where I just went a whole other place vocally. Yeah. But, um, this was the combination of the look of love. Oh. The look of love. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Is in your eyes a look 
Your smile mm. can disguise. It's a good song and you for go, you. You go oh, into that the boy. song. Tree, and it, I know. It goes ah. into a song called The Island yeah. with so uh, better than us a link, this song. Yeah. English lyrics by Marilyn Allen Bergman, music yeah. by Yvonne Linz. Uh. It's all sexual. Oh. And I, I haven't done it in a while, so I'm just <laughs> make believe we've landed on a desert island. Bathe me in the water. Mm. Warm me in the moonlight, taste mm. me with your kisses, find the secret places, touch me till I tremble, free my wings for flying. I don't know all the lyrics right now. I haven't oh done it in a while. I always word. have to move. Wow. Um, it's so sexual. Well, so here's when the I show. reincarnate, I'd like that voice. One of the things I was going <laughs> to ask you about, too, is is not only do you have a, an incredible, like, amazing voice, but there's something about so the way much. that you sing that emotes so Sultry. much feeling and passion and and, and wondering right. what that's like for you. Like, is that sort of something you consciously think of? Is it just come naturally for you? It's, uh, to me, I won't do a song, because years yeah. ago when I started out, somebody said, oh, you have to do this song because it's so great. And mm. I learned from doing it, if it yeah. didn't mean anything to me, right. you, can't do so it. you can't do it. Yeah. So I like to have songs that I can relate to, and nice. thereby I can transfer it to my audience uh, and let them yeah. feel the same things yeah. I'm feeling. Yeah. But I, you, you know, it's, it's, a song is really a three-act play. Uh, <laughs> a beginning, a middle, and an end. Hmm. And if you live the story, which is why mm. it's good to have the experience right. or something, something you can relate to, yeah. um, then um, what is the point I'm making? I went somewhere on a whole other. Uh, it's okay. We're mesmerized, well, well, so you no, just no, talk about like, what you want. That's, that's about connecting, <laughs> connecting to, the to the words and the words, and the connecting feelings. to the audience uh -huh. and thing, life experiences that you can share. Uh -huh. And I, I don't know what I, you know. Yeah. It's like I've always said. And I've learned through mm. my own growth mm. that I've been given a gift by God. Yeah. I'm and yeah. um, I, you know, I, I'm in the moment. Yeah, and, I can and feel it. And just the stories, yeah. they have, they are very intimate and mm. very part of me. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know how not to sing. It's like when yeah. I work out, I work out hard. Uh, and when uh -huh. I'm, you know, when I sing a song that has meaning to me, yeah. I live it. Uh, yeah. I live it for those three minutes. You are fully present you know? in the moment as yes. you're singing them, and I'm feeling that right sitting right across from you. It's beautiful. You know, and I have yeah. a more yeah. personal question <laughs> for you yes. uh, since we're talking yeah. about <laughs> lovely. <laughs> Don't ask She's going to lighten dating. up the mood a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> who are you dating? I'm not. I'm not. Anybody out there? <laughs> yeah. um, what I mean, are you looking you'd for? You'd be lucky, <laughs> by the oh way. God. You'd be very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I, You know what? Whatever I'm looking for, I must have two on <laughs> I don't, oh. <laughs> I don't seem to get it. Yeah. But um, um, it would, you know. You gotta lower the laundry list a little. But you know something, <laughs> it's, it, what's so weird is that uh, I did a lot of um, soul searching in the 80s. Mm. Um, it was after I had been married for a short period of time and yeah. uh -huh. everything, and I kind of closed down, and I, I was like, why am I here? Uh, Dear God, yeah. I need to know what is my purpose Important in this questions. lifetime. Yeah, yeah. And so for years I got into this spirituality and reading books about psychic phenomena mm, and mm. people that channeled and I knew which mm. ones I could relate to and which were not so kosher, uh, meaning they weren't real, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. whatever. <laughs> um, you learn how to decipher and I was regressed yeah. and I found out what the reason was I was here for and it mm. was to heal. Uh, and it wasn't so much, you know, maybe if, if I'm meant to have it somewhere, it'll come into my life. I yeah. don't spend time looking for it. Mm. Um, somebody special but mm. I'm meant to spread that yeah. amongst well it sounds like it's cocky but it's not it's like it was it a soul, cocky to me it's a soul search, I'm right? like I teach yoga and, and meditation <laughs> it's basically world uh -huh. humanity mm. harmony peace love mm. Beautiful. I, I'm here to heal everyone. Right. Hopefully. Well, and you have such Hopefully. amazing gifts to be able to do some of that healing with your voice with your acting with your presence well, what you know? It's like I say, it's him going, working through me. Right. I say, and before I go on stage, I yeah. usually say an, an affirmation to use me as your vessel to uh, spread your joy and thought. your love, uh, your nice. universal love. Yeah. It's nice. a thought, you know. Yeah. Because that's what to me it's really all about. It's yeah. not about my ego. It's a, uh, I get filled uh -huh. just from the sheer joy that I was able to touch someone's heart, uh, bring yeah. them out of a sad moment, or uh, make them happier. Yeah. I remember once when I was singing in a nightclub in. in um, San Francisco, this is mm. when I was really young, and I, yeah. I sang the song When I Fall in Love, which was part of my very first show that uh -huh. I did. And How this couple, again? 
When I fall in love. Thank you. Thank it you. will be forever. You know, but <laughs> I was nice like song. 18 at the time yeah. or something, mm. or 20 or whatever. And this couple came up to me after I sang, and they said yeah. that after I sang the song, he proposed. Oh, oh wow. Talk about healing. Right? <laughs> You're doing your <laughs> life's and work and there. And telling this to a kid. And I, 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 you know, and I, I just felt so good. Oh, yeah. No kidding. Yeah. Knowing you had that kind of influence, and, that you know, impact. Well, what's interesting, so, too, is even as yeah. you're sharing it, you made both us feel really good. Like, you uh -huh. see, you share love, and it just sort of connects like a chain yeah. in the same yeah. way that hate it's or like anger melting. or fear would, you're just right? Like, okay. you use love. <laughs> love is yeah. the important key word, and it's so much of what we need mm -hmm. today. Yeah, we should. Did you, you know, it's so funny. You saw when the, the Broadway people did What the World Needs Now is Love. Just so you know, my yeah. director, Richard J. Alexander, yeah. put it, we put it in my show, this the mm. summer prior. Oh, so you were... I was doing it, and I used to love it because I used to love uh, Jackie DeShannon. Yeah. I remember going when she used to open for the Beatles uh, at uh, wow. Forest Hill Stadium and oh, stuff, wow. and I would go. Yeah. She f would sing that song, and I used to love it. And uh, Dionne yeah. Warwick did a version of it. Oh, God, Dionne Dion Warwick. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I haven't heard a, that name in a while. A, right, yeah. such a good feeling song. Yeah. You know? yeah. What, um, when, when you've been married or when you've been in, uh, you know, serious relationships, do your boyfriends or significant others, uh, you know, do they ask you to serenade them ever? <laughs> you know, so there was one time, well, I'll tell Good you, question. I'll tell you, I did um, the symphony with the Glendale Symphony and it was a Christmas show and at, at, I, I don't know, Dallas Rains, the weatherman. He was like one of the hosts or something, hmm. and he not. I mean, he was married and everything, but he said, "My God, I could listen to that voice." <laughs> <He was> like, <laughs> no it's so funny because it, it takes me aback. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't look at myself that way. Yeah, yeah. isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah, yeah. But it, it's like I don't realize. But and, even, and when and when I've been with people, yeah. and hey, baby, I'm was, having a rough right. night. Sing me, <laughs> <laughs> sing me. I don't want soup. But sing when me I was something. married, <laughs> when I was married, we would sing together. Oh, and as a nice. matter of fact, at my at my wedding ceremony, yeah. um, Bruce Roberts and Bud Court wrote us a um, wedding song, and we mm. did it as part of the ceremony. It's what mm. we have. Oh, yeah. oh how cool! It's called, and we did it right, you know, just before your vows and uh, stuff. I mean, it yeah. was really. <laughs> oh. yeah. the wedding was gorgeous, but. The marriage didn't work out so well. Uh, All right. But we still, oh, we, we were still friends. <laughs> hey, let's hit cut for a second. So, sure. Christina, you can edit that and just see what yeah, that yeah. I'm so glad. <laughs> Connecting us to our hearts. Uh, hello. <laughs> Connecting like to our hearts. I know. As you're singing, seriously, I'm just like, ah, oh, I could listen I to you for hours. <laughs> um, have you ever written your own music? I wrote one song, and we're going back to the 80s, because mm. everybody says, why not? My, even my friend Barry, and Sedona, uh, send me books you should be writing. You should yeah. be writing. I don't know why I'm intimidated by it, but uh, you, I, was, uh -huh. I decided to try to write a song in the 1980s with my musical director, then Michael Orland, who now mm. is playing for me again, mm. and our friend Judy Quay, because we're, we're very, uh, especially Judy and I were very much into the spiritual part at that time. Uh, and uh, I wanted to convey love. You know, uh, through it. But we did, uh, we, and it took us forever, we, all the Chinese meals that we ordered upstairs, and the, <laughs> we always had to send them the, the uh, fortune cookies, and sometimes we came, you, the more they sent, the same fortune was in the cookie. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we said, you delivered us the same fortune. What is <laughs> they were delivering you the same more food. More cookies, right. <laughs> Could have been worse. But, <laughs> it, took, it was like, it was a, it, it was an act of love because I really wanted to get mm. to that point. Mm. It's called Light of Love. Uh -huh. And it's basically, it's kind of a love song, but it's not. But it's about <laughs> loving another. You and want to sing a little of it? <laughs> 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 well, you know what? I have, to, I have to go in the studio to be able to record it because great. I think uh, it's so timely right yeah, now yeah. Great. in this world. Talk about you know, using that for healing, but, too. Um, yeah. When you love somebody, it's like a mirror into your heart. And it's you and me giving light for all to see. I feel this moment touch a place inside of me where freedom soars through open doors. Wow. And once again, I'm home. And it's about you know, mm. coming there, but also how you also have to give yourself love, and sometimes you have right. to say goodbye uh, to, to do your own growth. Wow. But, wow. You know, but always you're the light of love, and you what have to shine that you? light. And it, I just and got shine, chills in the back of my head. It shines <laughs> it for yeah. everybody. Yeah. So that's the one 
song you that I was really, part of a threesome that, that oh, wrote. Oh, cool. And we want to get in the studio. You should. It should. Because yeah. I, got chill, I literally got chills sound. in the back of my yeah. skull. You know, I just think it's so, so timely. Do it. When yeah. we were here at the Catalina, I, I, that was my, my encore number. I did it instead of something else I was doing. Uh, do it. Nights here. It's beautiful. Don't think yeah. about it. Just do it. Yeah, make it happen. Do it. No, it I feels have to right. start looking at my synonym book and my thesaurus. And <laughs> and <start>. <laughs> I don't know why I get so intimidated. I mean, it's, um, not, it's not easy, and I have so many right. friends that are great songwriters. Mm -hmm. You know, but so... And, well, so, and you choose songs that really resonate and yes. speak to you as well, which is mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. yeah. And music is really, I think, especially in the love songs uh, genre, I mean, it's just changed over the years, you know. Right. Right, so much, right, over the decades from oh, even yeah. when you first started music and as you moved through oh. the decades. I mean, wow, what, a, what decades worth of music you've gotten to be a part of and experience and... Um, but I was even thinking, like, you know, it, it was much to my surprise when we looked up uh -huh. the top five love songs that uh, Endless Love uh -huh. with uh, Diana Ross and Lionel Richie was yeah. number yeah. one, because I expected it to be like, you know, ooh, What ooh. about the face? <laughs> I saw your face by Roberta Flack. Oh, wow. That yeah. was sensual. Wow. Yeah, it right? sure was. One yeah. of my favorites from years and years and years ago, from the 60s, was from uh -huh. The Sandpiper, The Shadow of Your Smile. Wow. Oh. And you don't, you're like, wow. I don't. I don't. She never heard of it. I, don't. <laughs> I completely don't. I mean, see, and thank you I for go. calling me on this, that because I'm like, this, wow, well, I'm no, going to rack you, my brain as she talks about it no, and try to recall Google it. it later. <laughs> but you can call me on a lot of today's stuff. I don't know from anything. And right. you'll wow me. I mean, <laughs> you'll be like, baby love, my baby love. I know that one. Right. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, and I'm that's snapping. When, that, well, those are my days of listening to. I had the transistor radio in my ear, uh, and I had uh -huh. Dandy Dan Daniels in the top 25 in New York mm. while I was doing homework. I love and it. every week I went to Mel's Record Rack and I bought mm. one new album. I love you it. You know, and then the English Invasion, and I loved. I mean, I was yeah. one of those people that kissed the TV for the Beatles. Uh. I was so <laughs> I was so kiss, thrilled. kiss the camera like you used to. <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine Paul and Ringo. <laughs> and I was so thrilled because when my sister was in England doing Funny Girl, mm. they came. She got, she saw them, she met them, yeah. and she got me. She brought me home an autograph <gasps> picture of the four. Oh, how nice! I, I was, I was, oh, like, how oh, nice! I was so thrilled. No kidding. Yeah. She That's said, a she nice sister. Me, like, you'll never know who came up. And, and touched me on the on the shoulder. Uh -huh. she, you know, she was she excited was, also, or no, was it? I don't think so. It was just more you. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. You know? she's like, ah, it was just Paul. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, ah. Actually, my favorite was George. George, oh, yeah. Well, uh, of course. Yeah, I could see that. That yeah. makes sense. <laughs> well, that makes sense. He was like shy and. I don't know. There was just something about him that, mm. you know, when you had your girlfriends, you all had a favorite Beatle, and you would play. This was the, the make-believe games you would play as kids. Uh. She'd be married to Paul. I'd be married to George. <laughs> everybody else was married to Ring. You know, and you would play these imaginary games, just sure. like when I was a kid. And I, I would be home alone, and I would play albums and act them out. Uh. Or I had favorite television shows, and uh, I would write scenarios and put myself in the show and mm. like act it out in my make-believe world when I came home from school. <laughs> right. I did that with Cindy yeah. Lauper songs with yeah. one of my girlfriends in the neighborhood. We would we. Would would sort of play yeah. make believe uh -huh. and sort of acting. I can't. I don't even remember. True Colors. Uh, True Colors was yeah. like one of the songs we would song. sing, or like the Karen Carpenter. I have a hair on my leg, but uh, my Is arm. Did she write that? I have a hair on my arm. No, no. <laughs> I was like talking, and I felt something crawl, and I was like, "Please tell me it's not a bug." James has done that, by the way, where James is like, hey, come here, and it's like a spider. It happens to me daily, and yeah. I feel like, what is that? Yeah. Right. And it's, it's, like, it's, it's all part your of hair having breaking. long hair, yeah, right? It breaks off. It's, like, it's you getting oh bald. God. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real. It's just shedding, natural shedding. <laughs> I have to get one of those dog yeah. things. You right. lose hair where you want it, you yeah, get it where you don't. don't. want it. <laughs> 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 anyway, so yes, exactly. <laughs> but we did it with like Karen Carpenter songs and uh, yeah. um, God, what was that song that Karen Carpenter used to sing? It was so sad. Mm, well, um, <laughs> which one wasn't sad? <laughs> Love, look at the two of us. That was we've only. No, no, it was a ballad. Um, that was a ballad. Uh, <laughs> I thought that was like a tempo ballad. Much, um, um, but it's so interesting you know, I, that I'm, songs recall certain <laughs> moments and experiences, yeah. you know, and right. it also, I'm like, mm. how many times, you know, are there like breakup songs or, you mm. know, romantic songs or songs, you know, that, that you play at your wedding art. or right? that, yeah. right? Exactly. That it's your part of dance, our shared first... experiences. Yeah. Yeah. And I so. remember, I can't remember now the name of the song, and I used to do it in my show. Huh. It was Melissa Manchester and Carol Bayer Sager. Squeaking and think, under here. Uh, 
and Marvin Hamlish, I think, wrote it. And I used to sing it. I sang it as my brother. Speaking is of. <laughs> I'm like, is that me? <laughs> Did one of my hairs were just like. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, they're it curly, my, they're all crazy. At my crazy. brother's wedding, <laughs> right after the canter. And you know, the canter was like, how do I? <laughs> it's like, yeah. she was like, so it was very, you know, they are, they do have, it had meaning for me. It was the first dance at my wedding. Mm. And I sang it for my oh, brother lovely. and my sister in law at their wedding. Oh, wow. Does your brother yeah. have a voice? No. <laughs> my brother was a, 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 my brother was an artist, though. He oh, went to Pratt okay. Institute and he had his own uh -huh. advertising agency wow. years ago. He was a commercial artist. So you just artist. have a very artistic family yeah, in general. Very artistic. Oh my God. Very even creative. My, even family. my great niece, my, my niece's children are huh. so uh, art, artistic. Gifted, huh? Yes, very Again, gifted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In case the universe wants to listen, <laughs> I am reincarnating next life <laughs> into this family. <laughs> Just saying, <laughs> I've always been a mediocre artist, much better at speaking. I want to sing like that right. or draw like her brother does. Hello. Just saying. James, any request you want to put out there? I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> um, yep. Anyway, uh, yes. we should wrap it up a little bit and, um, and get her recorded on radio and podcasts, which you're yeah. going to want to listen to. Uh, so where can yeah. people find you? Well, coming up October 25th, mm -hmm. I am going to be at the Wick Theater in Boca Raton. Oh, nice. So any of you in Florida or coming to Florida, nice. please come. I understand yeah. it's a beautiful theater and they have a costume museum connected with it. Yes, I, I read online phenomenal. and looked it up uh -huh. when you saw that. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. Nice. And, and that's uh, October or that's September? That's October 25th. Okay, okay. Yeah. cool. And your so website again? My website is www.roslynkline.com. Cool. That's where it's Roslyn like, it's like a, Long Island. Like, right, spelt that way. R-O-S-L-Y-N. <laughs> kind as in probably one of the kindest people you'll meet. Hello, yeah. The people, people, people you'll meet. Yeah, I'm, that's okay. I'm, I'm can you that not kind of be too. such right. a good listener? Could you just listen <laughs> a you little know? less specifically? It's so funny because when I'm in a really intimate room and people uh -huh. are talking, like I remember years ago, the, remember the Damn. rose tattoo? Yeah. And I would, I, every Wednesday I would be there and the guys would all come in after Dynasty went off the air. Yeah. The Dynasty. And it went off the air uh. they were in the club. And I could hear people talking over there. And I remember somebody was talking about food. And I'm like, I, in the middle of my song, yeah, Chin Chin's great. Uh. And I was like, I it's just don't part know of your how, act. Yeah. I just. <laughs> Well, you're you, terrible. and you're you in a variety of settings, and you're down to earth, and you, yeah, Your next bring that career in. is as a therapist, you listen so well. <laughs> you know, I had a friend who was a therapist, may she rest in peace, and she said to me I should be one. Yeah, I, I could see, see that. that. Yeah, I I'm like... That. As a therapist, I could see that. When we start doing seminars, we'll bring you around. <laughs> you want to know how to communicate? Listen. Uh-huh. Go to her. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for yes. watching The James and Heather Show. Uh, I'm Heather. And I'm James. Find us on thejamesandheathershow.com. You can listen to all our podcasts, radio shows, and talk shows like this. Yep. And check out the podcast with Rosie coming up soon. soon. Bye. Bye.